You know, I have to say, I really love changing the oil in the oil filter in these M112 V6s and M113 V8 Mercedes-Benz engines. Look at the location of the oil filter. Not only is the location nice, but when you pull the filter out, it doesn't leak all over the place. So you can just pull this straight up like that, and it's going to drip a little bit, and then you just put it in a drip pan and set it aside. But let's talk a little bit more about filters. Not all filters are created equal. You know, with this long oil change interval recommendation on most of these newer engines, I think the synthetic oil does just fine. But I'm a little suspicious about how well the oil filters fare. You know, I've pulled a lot of these oil filters out at 10,000 miles, and man, they are filthy. Particularly when the engine gets over about 80,000 miles. And of course, when it gets up to 140,000 miles, like this car here, this E320 wagon, uh, I don't go with the 10,000 mile interval, okay? <laughs> and I've had so many emails over the last 20 years. Kent, what do you recommend for oil? Kent, what do you recommend for oil change intervals? And so on and so forth. And remember, this is a lot of this is an opinion. Uh, this is my opinion. This is what I do with my own cars. So I'm just going to let you know that right up front. This is my opinion. I don't have any hard and cold scientific facts which are going to support everything I'm going to say in this video. But if you think about it logically, nothing I'm going to say is going to do harm. If anything, if you stick with the original oil change intervals up to the end of life of an engine, maybe at 250, 300,000 miles, then I suspect you may be doing some harm. If you're going to be spending a little more money on uh, more frequent oil changes. But I have something that I've started recently on my cars. I call it a mid-change filter replacement. Now, I wouldn't do this on most cars because it's such a pain to just replace the filler. On some cars, you get underneath, you know, and you pull the filler, you got oil running all over the place. But you saw how easy it was to replace the filter in this M112 engine. So why not, at the midpoint of your oil change interval, just pull that filler out and put a new filter in? Now, is that going to cause any harm? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> now, let's take a close look at this filler, and we're going to talk about the importance of selecting the right filter if you're running one of these newer engines with synthetic oil. Let's pull the filter off this housing here and take a closer look. Okay, this oil isn't very clean looking either. You know, we're looking at about 6,000 miles here when the last oil change was done. So let's take a look at the filter. And once again, without using a microscope, it'd be really hard to tell just how impacted this is with any minute particles. But you have to remember when an engine ages, you have you know, carbon going by the piston rings, mixing with the oil, and you know, circulating throughout the engine. Of course, the oil filter is supposed to take care of that. But when it gets this dirty, why not just replace the filter? Now the filter element that you use in these cars is not just any normal filter element. And this is where you're going to run into problems if you just go into an auto parts store and ask them to give you a oil filter for your Mercedes M112, whether it be an M-Class, C-Class, CLK, or E-Class. They're going to maybe give you a paper filter, and that's bad, okay? <laughs> you want to use fleece filters. Let me explain more. If you're driving one of these newer cars with a recommended high interval oil change, like the recommendation on this E320, you have to be really careful about the filter you purchase. There's what's called paper element filters and fleece filters. I won't go into the technological difference between the two in this video, but just keep in mind that the paper filter element does not cut it with high interval oil changes when using synthetic engine oil. You want to go with a fleece filter. This is very important because you already saw how dirty these can get with 10,000 miles put on them. And if you're running a paper element filter, some of these can even deteriorate and fail over that long a time period. So stay away from paper element filters, all right? Stay away from them and make sure you get fleece. Now, I found that even some of these parts stores don't know the difference. So you, you just be careful where you purchase the filters. Make sure 
that they are the right filter. We only sell the ones that are made in Germany. Our filter of choice is the Hengst. There's a couple things we really like about it. The quality of the O-rings that they supply in the kit, they now supply a white O-ring at the top of the lid. And I think they did this because it's pretty hard to miss forgetting to put the O-ring on, you know, a black O-ring against a black cap. That's kind of easy. But when you see this white one, you know the O-ring's in place. You want to put a light film of oil on it, of course, before you install it. And the other O-rings need to come in place. They give a little bit of instruction. But what I've done on my website, because we've decided to sell these in a three pack, I give you a training video on how to do this oil change yourself. Then you're gonna make sure that you're getting the right filter and you're getting the job done right. Because another thing is you wanna be very careful how clean you are doing this job. I've seen a couple videos on YouTube where it's like, you know, people are changing their own, just throwing things around and they don't even care about particle contamination in this housing here. Well, I don't feel that way. I'm a little particular about what goes inside my engine. And you need to know that I use a very special lint-free cleaning cloth to wipe out the inside of that housing. Just wipe it out very carefully because there might be some sludge and other junk down in there. And of course, you can clean this part here completely with this paper towel. It's gonna to take some rubbing and wiping, but you don't wanna use a normal paper towel like this. It just starts to fall apart. You're gonna end up getting, you know, paper towel down there, paper towel stuck to your shaft and to your filter. So avoid normal shop paper towels when doing this type of cleaning. Uh, I'm not sure, you can check my website, but we may even decide to include these cloths with our filters. They're kind of expensive, but we may decide to just raise the price a little bit on the filters and give you some cloths so you have those on hand when you do an oil filter change on your M112 or M113 engine. Now, what about intervals? I want to kind of close talking about intervals. You know, 10,000 miles, I feel is okay, up to 80,000 miles. <laughs> You say, why 80,000 miles? Well, I just from my experience of working on engines, you know, from 80 to 100,000 miles, that's when the wear seems to start accelerating. And what I do is I drop the interval 20%. Uh, so if it's a 10,000 mile interval change, when my cars hit 80,000 miles, I drop it down to 80,000 miles. And then when it hits 120,000 miles, and this is kind of another point I've seen with engines at 120,000 miles, there's a lot of things that start to wear out at 120,000 miles. You have water pumps, you have a lot of the bearings in the front of the engine, you have motor mounts, things like that. You also, at that point, may notice that your engine starts burning a little oil. And so when my engines hit 120,000 miles, I drop the oil change interval 40% to 6,000 miles. So on this car, it's every 6,000 miles, and every 3,000 miles, I just pop that cap off and put a new oil filter in. That's my preference. <laughs> you know, maybe if I run this car to a million miles and run another one that I don't do that to to a million miles and take the engines apart, I can show you my proof. But once again, this is my opinion. It's based on experience and probably a little bit of logic. And once again, I don't feel there's any harm you can do to your engine by lowering the interval and replacing <laughs> the filter more often. If you have one of these engines, I highly recommend that you do the oil changes yourself. I'm gonna put some links below in some of the other videos I've shot on what happens when you get oil changes at these quickie loop places. Oh, it can be really bad. And this is something that can be very clean, particularly if you have a vacuum extractor to suck the oil out, which I did earlier. I'm not even getting under the car. And you saw how easy and clean it is to remove this filter. Well, then you're gonna make sure you get the right oil you're gonna make sure you get the right filter and you're gonna make sure the job gets done right. <laughs> so I highly recommend, this is a job you do yourself. We're gonna sell these filters, like I say, in a three pack check to see about the regs, whether we sell them as an add-on or include them with the kit. And then you'll get that free instructional video on the step-by-step -step procedure, how to do these oil changes yourself and not only save money, but add a lot of peace of mind. So you might be thinking, hey, Kent, what about viscosity? You didn't say anything about how thick of oil you use. Well, I generally follow the manufacturer's recommendations up until a point when the engine starts to show some signs of wear. That's usually in the 100 to 120,000 mile range. When I start seeing an engine using a little bit of oil or other signs of wear, I up the viscosity. That's my personal preference. It depends, of course, on the time of the year. If it's real cold in the winter, I'm not gonna put a, a 50 weight oil in the engine. 
But we're approaching summer here in the Northwest, and I'm upping the viscosity on this car because it has 140,000 miles. It's using a little bit of oil, less than a quart between oil changes, but enough to show me that I've got some ring wear. So I've upped the viscosity on this car to 540 instead of 530. And this is something you can play around with. I generally will increase viscosity when the engine gets over 100 to 120,000 miles, and that's my personal preference. Once again, just a slight increase to reduce oil consumption and maybe give it a little bit more oomph because of the excess bearing and ring wear that might be occurring in the engine. You also probably noticed I didn't really show or say what kind of oil I was using, and that's deliberate. I mean, talk about opinion. This really gets opinionated. So I don't want to get into any oil wars here. This is not the purpose of this video to say, well, this oil is the best in the world or that oil. All I would say is follow the factory recommendations. Mercedes has a specification for oil. Just check and make sure that the oil you're using is approved by Mercedes-Benz and you'll be just fine.